there guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part 6 of our Roll Top Desk Build. Well, when we left the show last week, we had just finished constructing our writing um, boards and they've all been sanded up and I've checked the fit of each one of those slots. There was a little bit of sanding that was needed to fine tune it to make them fit well. But now our next step that we need to start with is the supports for those boards. So let's head over to the desk and we'll start um, with furring out the sides. Well here I've got the writing board put in place and it slides well from front to back but you can see where there could be a problem here with this thing shifting side to side and by coming out askew like that it, it just really doesn't work. It's, it's, it has the potential to jam in there, it just doesn't slide nicely. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to fur out the inside of each one of the side panels and we're going to fur it out the same distance that is uh, between the inside edge and the edge of the opening for our writing boards and in this particular case it's half inch. Now we've got plenty of half inch poplar left over from um, our drawer um, glide supports so I'm just going to fur this out from front to back half an inch and we're going to glue it in place and use some brad nails in this three-quarter oak to just solidify it there in place and of course the glue is going to go a long way to keeping that in place as well. So there is absolutely nothing in the plans as far as how to construct these supports for your writing boards. So I've taken this half inch poplar and um, I've planed it down. I've taken about a 64th off of it just to give it some wiggle room as I like to say. And I'm going to apply a bead of glue to the back of it, sit it in place and I have my combination square set so that it's flush with the top edge of our opening and I'm going to sit that in place there with the glue on the back and shoot a couple brad nails in to secure it, making sure that it's at the right height all the way along. Um, there is a reason that I have it set to the top of this and I'll get into that with the next step. So mount your side rails to fur it out and then we'll carry on with these uh, writing board supports. Now that you've got that furred out, put your board in place and slide it front to back. Just make sure that it slides nicely, that for some reason the board isn't pulled out or popped out, just enough to jam your writing board in there. Now what I've got here is a three quarter inch thick piece of red oak and uh, it's one inch wide. For these next supports, I would suggest using a hardwood. It doesn't have to be oak, you'll never see it, but at least something of the same uh, equivalency to hardness as your writing boards. You don't want to use poplar because that hard red oak rubbing on these top and bottom rails is going to eventually wear it. So you want to try to minimize that. So for that I'm going to use the same species. But you want to place it just like this in place. Now the reason that we put this board here, this poplar, and furred it out the way that we did is that we want to place a setup block, three quarters of an inch thick, and then I have another one here for one thirty second of an inch. And by lining it up and using the setup blocks just like that, I'm going to be able to place a bead of glue here and glue this in place and using brad nails again I'm going to be able to shoot it into this poplar board. Now I'm going to use inch and a quarter brad nails so it's actually going to go into the outer oak 
um, we're going to glue it in place and that will give us a 1 32nd of an inch uh, gap of play top to bottom on our writing boards so that it's not jamming. So our next step, install these lower rails the way that I've got it sitting here. This is um, a bit of an awkward procedure. So if you have someone that can give you a hand with this um, just to help you hold things in place, that would be ideal. Unfortunately for me today, I'm working alone out here. So that's okay, I'll get it done. Just like I said, line that up with your setup block. Once you get it in place, shoot a brad in there and then continue it on the back end of this support. Now it is possible for this to be warped or shifted, so you want to be checking all the way along the board before you go letting the glue set up. So finish mounting those up. With the sides furred out and that bottom support, you can already see how easily or how much easier this slides in and out as comparison to before. You might have seen it jamming a little bit on me as I was pulling it out. Now it slides rather easily. Um, here's the thing though, when you pull it out, it has that opportunity for sag. And if you're resting on this or using something or writing, <laughs> heaven forbid that you should write on a writing board, you're going to need some support to keep it from lifting up on the inside. So again, I've got some oak, three quarters of an inch thick, and I'm using an inch and a half wide piece. Now, we lined up that poplar with the top of our opening for a reason, and that's so it makes for an easy alignment of this piece right there like that. When your board pulls out, you can see now that support now holds that rather firmly. However, don't forget about your kerf that's along here for these clips to hold our desktop in place. So what I've done is I've put four clips here where I'm going to have them for the final assembly. Measured in between, I get six inches. And for these ones in between our clips, we're going to put a six inch piece on each section, glued and uh, brad nailed in place. And I may even screw it into the side. I don't know yet. Uh, I'm thinking brad nails should be just fine for this. But we're going to brad nail this in place and glue it. And that will give us the support on this side of the table while still giving us access to screw up into our desktop. So something to keep in mind, don't put a solid piece on this outside edge because you need the room for those tabletop clips. And with those top supports in place, um, you want to give it a one last test fit to make sure that everything slides nicely and it does. And you can see there that gives some great support for writing, working, whatever it is that you want to do on these sort of things. And um, I wouldn't sit on it, guaranteed I wouldn't sit on it, but it does slide very nicely, very smoothly. And um, is this pretty? No, it's not, but it's not meant to be in this case. Uh, it's inside support and that's all it's used for. And uh, it's just another requirement of the desk. No need to get pretty on that sort of thing. So, we've got these done. Where do we go from here? Well, I'll tell you where we're going to go from here, and that is our drawer fronts. All of the drawer fronts, according to the plans, call for 7 8 of an inch stock. Who the heck keeps this on their wood rack? Well, certainly not me. So, I'm going to have to mill a bunch of 7 8 inch thick uh, red oak, and then once we get that done, we can cut them all to their size. Now there's listing in the plans. I don't really need to go through all the sizes. If you're following along with that, well then you can check the plans and hopefully the cut list will be correct. 
From there, once we get all of those pieces cut, we're going to head to the router table. Well, I've got all my drawer faces cut to length and they're all milled to 7 eighths of an inch thick. Um, the overhang on all of these drawers is a quarter of an inch all the way around. So if you wanted to double check your measurements, it's basically the width of your hole plus half an inch. So we've got our width at uh, 10 and 3 quarters, quarter of an inch on each side. That means that each uh, drawer face is 11 and a quarter inches um, in length. And the width of it, of course, is the opening plus half an inch. And that varies from um, side to side of the desk and depending on which drawer you're talking about. Well, there's all kinds of profiles that you could be routing in the front faces of this drawer. But to keep everything uniform, I want to use my uh, raised panel bit. And I'm going to route them until that lip that would normally fit inside uh, the groove from the rail and style. Normally, we would route that to a quarter of an inch thick, but I'm going to route these panels so that there is three-eighths of an inch of material left, and then um, we will end up with the profile that I'm hoping will look good on the front of these drawer faces. I don't think we need a video here of how to route it. It's the same as routing the raised panels, and we saw that back in part one or two, I believe, possibly part two. But either way, um, it is the same process. So route all your drawer faces with your raised panel bit, and then we're gonna get into mounting these faces on the front of our drawers and square everything up with the face frame. Well, I've got all my face frames routed out, and uh, truth be told, I didn't go as narrow here as three-eighths of an inch. I actually left it at half an inch. It just seemed right. It was beefier. It provided a softer profile on the front instead of having that little lip around. I, I just liked it better. So you can do what you like. It's your drawers. But for me, I left it at half an inch thickness here, and that gives a nice soft front here for our hardware to get mounted onto. So now that we've got these all routed, we're gonna give them a light sanding, um, and then from there, we're gonna get them mounted up. Well, the very first thing that you wanna do is you wanna get comfortable. And our drawer faces stick out, as I've said, over the outside edge all the way around by a quarter of an inch. So what I've done is I've set up this little unit here so that it leaves a quarter of an inch between the edge of this face frame opening and this section here. That way I can just butt my drawer face up against this piece and I'll know that I'm in the exact spot of where it needs to be. As well, the calculations here, if each piece overhangs by one quarter of an inch, that means that between each face frame or each piece of the face frame, there has to be three quarters of an inch. I hope that makes sense. But bottom line is, once you get your first one in place and you're happy with the placement, all it takes is a three quarter inch spacer in between each of these drawer faces and you know that you have them properly spaced vertically up and down with this little trick here. And you don't need a commercial one like this. You can make your own little spacer, you know, a little saddle square out of whatever scraps you have. But with this little unit, we know that this is very well placed and that this is where it's supposed to be and we can mount it in place. But the first step before you get into mounting these drawer faces is we want to make sure that all of our drawers are flush with our face frames. I've checked to make sure this drawer face is flush with the face frame. If yours is a little bit out in or uh, too far in or too far out, you can use the screws. If you remember, we use the horizontal slots on our actual hardware on the, the rails. So we can adjust those rails in or out accordingly. 
I've drawn a line half of an inch down from the top of the drawer and half of an inch up from the bottom of the drawer and at one and a quarter inches in from each edge I'm going to drill a one eighth inch diameter hole. Now the reason for this hole is that this is the hole where our face frames are going to mount onto our drawers. They will be screwed and countersunk from the back. So for now we can drill these four mounting holes and then we will get into the rest of the, uh, the mounting. Well, silly me, I forgot about the bottom of the drawer and when I drilled in, I actually damaged the bottom of the drawer here a little bit. Well, I'm not going to cry too much over it, at least not on camera. Um, so I'm, I've moved the bottom holes up another quarter of an inch to three quarters from the bottom. There you go, another mistake on film. Well, the next step is I've got some of this double-sided tape here, and uh, it's a clear tape. I'm just going to take small pieces of it, and I'm going to place it on the front of our drawer box, just like that. And once I have that adhered on there, I'm going to peel off the backing and close the drawer. Now, it's not rocket science from here as to what we need to do. Um, we're going to line up our face frame and once we get it nicely lined up and we're all happy with where it is, we are going to uh, press it in place and let the double-sided tape hold it where we need it to be. And once we're happy with that placement, if we're 100% sure that we're happy with that placement, then we're going to be um, using screws from the inside of the drawer to um, secure that front face in place exactly where we want it so that it's not going to move. Now I've drawn a line at the top of the face frame opening here just to help me with the alignment on the top side of this and we'll line it up as best we can. And once we get it lined up, we will just push it into place here. Just like that. Now, obviously that's not a permanent mounting, it's only double-sided tape, but we want to check it now for square, to make sure that it's square to the face frame, that we're happy with its overall position before we go crazy on the mounting. So push it in place, double check. See, I'm seeing that it's too far to the left. So no problem. Pop it off and mount it again. Don't settle for it being okay. It has to be right. And again, if you have uh, someone that can help you. Another set of hands here is very helpful. Just like that. So I'm going to continue to check this and get this squared away. And once I have it on there the way that I think it should be, and I think everything's hunky-dory, I'm going to screw it down. Well, now that that drawer face is mounted, um, I'm actually going to remove it and drill for the hardware. Um, in the subsequent drawers from here on in, I will be drilling the holes for the hardware first. My mistake, I guess, in the rush to get this on, I forgot all about the hardware. But that's okay. No big deal. Um, I'm going to carry on with the same steps except for the drawers below this one, of the drawer faces below, I can use that three-quarter inch spacer to give me my guideline as to where it goes now that I have taken the time to do this one correctly. So carry on and mount the rest of the drawer faces on the left side of the desk. I just wanted to show you guys the first drawer. Um, this is the hardware that I've chosen and it works well, it closes well, and it's nice and tight around. I've double checked this, triple checked this to make sure that it's square to the frame. And now that I've taken so much time to, uh, to make sure that this one is perfect, 
The next ones down the line are going to be so much easier to install with that three quarter spacer and my little gizmo stop at the edge to line up the left edge of the drawer faces. I've got all the drawer faces and the hardware installed. Um, there's just a couple things that I want to point out before I close out today's show. And that would be the double file drawer, the installation of those face plates. And I also wanted to talk about mounting the hardware. Um, while I'm on the subject of the drawers and mounting the face plates, initially, if you remember, I went up half an inch from the bottom of the drawers for the mounting holes, too close. Uh, I went up three quarters of an inch and while there was clearance now from the bottom of the drawer it didn't really give me much room to play around with countersinking the mounting screws. I was able to get them countersunk in that first drawer but for the future drawers I actually changed it to one inch from the bottom. So I didn't want to mislead you guys by making you think that you could go three quarters and still get that counter sunk. So one inch from the bottom for that. Now let's talk about this file drawer. Well as you're already aware this drawer on the bottom right side of the desk is a larger filing drawer and um, the face plates that are mounted on here are placed on here to mimic the left side of the desk to give it some symmetry left and right. But in fact, as you know, it is still one large drawer. The problem is when you mount the top face plate and the bottom face plate, you're left with a gap in between. And from the segment earlier on today's show, you know that that gap is three quarters of an inch. Well, I glued in a piece of um, three quarter inch wide to get the proper spacing by half an inch thick of red oak at first and I didn't like it because it actually uh, sort of blended these two together and we lost that individual uh, faceplate look. So what I did was I cut it down to three eighths of an inch thick still with that three quarter gap and that was able to define the profile of each one of these face plates while still giving enough material here on the side to keep it nice and rigid and nice and straight so that you know there wasn't any flexing here of this material. So something to keep in mind for the right file drawer is this spacer here that you want to place in between when mounting the face plates. So now that we've straightened that out I want to talk about mounting of the hardware. Well the initial hardware that these plants call for is actually wooden hardware um, that you would cut out of uh, red oak stock and as much as I'm trying to replicate an old style desk those wooden handles were a little too 1970s for me. Uh, I think I've said this before in, in this build somewhere, but I went through and this is the hardware I chose. And now the hardware I chose actually, it, it has um, standard three inch centers on the mounting bolts side to side. The problem is that the standard bolts that come with them are not long enough to go through both the half inch wall at the front of this drawer plus the seven eighths of an inch um, material that we use for the drawer face. So no problem, you can mount it just through to the face plate, but then you end up with a problem again. That bolt is not long enough to go through a seven eighths of an inch thick face plate. So you have to counter bore. Fantastic. Now you have your hardware mounted. But as we all know, what happens over time as things get worn and get used, etc., this hardware always loosens up. And I mean always. I don't care how good you are. But it loosens up. And sure, Loctite. You could put Loctite on it. But I don't like that option because what if 10 years, 20 years, whatever down the road, I decide that this hardware no longer suits me and I want to change it. 
Now I'm into a bit of an ordeal. So to combat that, once this hardware and uh, was mounted, or once I had the holes drilled for it, and I had the face plate mounted onto the front, I drilled a through hole right into the drawer. And once I got that through hole completed, I took the drawer face off and I drilled a half inch through hole just through the poplar drawer. Now, if I ever want to change the hardware or if for some reason it loosens, I have full access to the screws here. I can remove them, I can put them back in, I can tighten them, whatever I want just through these two access holes. If I wanted to, I could put a couple of half inch plugs in here and just plug those holes up. But to be quite honest with you, I'm not that concerned about it. It's on the inside of a drawer and all I wanted was access and access is what I have. So something to keep in mind when mounting your hardware is how you're going to access the screws and the mounting hardware for the drawer handle. So something to keep in mind. Well, now that you have all these drawer faces installed and you're happy with everything, you want to go around and give all of these drawers a good sanding, all on the profiles here. And very importantly, to me anyway, is this sharp edge on the edge of the drawers. Just run your sandpaper over that. Just a couple passes to knock that crisp edge off. I've already got several cuts on my hands from the edges of these uh, drawer faces. and it is quite sharp so if you have young ones around or even if you don't if you're the one working at the desk who the heck wants to be cut up all the time whenever you're doing something at the desk so give all of these sharp corners and sharp edges knock them off and uh, make it all nice and pretty and with that that's all the time we have for this week um, I would have liked to get a little more done, but you know what guys, that's the way it goes with build videos and with build series. Some days you need to cover the material and it takes a little longer and other days, um, like when we're doing the panels, it seems like we got a lot more done because we had earlier episodes of the show to, uh, to do the instructional part. Um, it's the way it goes in a build series, but either way, we are out of time for today. And uh, we're going to continue it next week. But guys, I want to thank you for joining me again this week. I hope you're enjoying the series. And I am going to see you next week with yet another woodworking video.